Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at a light cruiser. I like light cruisers. And this is the Shapayev, which I have unlocked a while ago but never really gotten around to play on my personal account because I was still grinding for the battle honors on the shores at tier 7. This is the tier 8 light cruiser in the Soviet tech tree. The Shapayev was the Project 68 ship as a successor to the Kirov class. And they downgraded the guns from the 180 millimeters that you found on the Kirov to 150 odd millimeter that you found on the Shapayev, but with more of them. These ships were, there were supposed to be an awful lot of them. I think 17 all in all were ordered. Seven were laid down, uh, but then, well, the war happened and the Germans, uh, I think, destroyed two uh, in that were still in the dockyard. And out of the remaining, some of them were completed after the war in the 1950s with, but not to the original specifications, but with slight upgrades. So they got rid of the torpedoes and of any kind of aircraft facilities and added uh, fire control radar. Not sure. Definitely some form of radar. And then later on, uh, that was the Project 68K. So the... Um, the slightly modified post-war version, and that then led to the Project 68 BIS for the Sverdlov class, which is, I think, the uh, Mikhail Kut uh, Kutuzov that we have in game here, also at tier 8, which then were um, even more modernized with better fire control and everything. But this is the original Shapayev. Well, kinda, because she does get a radar, but she does retain her, uh, she does retain her torpedo protection, so, uh, so, no, uh, her torpedo tubes. So this is sort of a mix of Project 68 and Project 68K to a degree. She also gets a defensive AA and a precise aim as we are used to. So let's compare this ship a little bit. Definitely not that, uh, but uh, let's compare that to the premium, to the Kutches of... This is one of the premiums. There are a couple out there. And... Uh, Kutuzov gets the smokescreen, but Shapayev actually has the radar. Kutuzov has better uh, defensive AA. Um, in uh, Kutuzov does get improved mobility, so, and significantly so. The Shapayev, just like the shores before her, is not the most maneuverable of ships. Uh, they are pretty quick with 33 knots, but nothing like not not a speed demon of any kind. The guns are completely identical. So these are the 152 millimeter, 12 guns. And uh, these are pretty murderous. A 6% fire chance <laughs> with a 7.8 second base reload and uh, an armor piercing that can make very, very short work of destroyers. Uh, as is traditional for the Soviet ships, the turret traverse is absolutely atrocious. It's worse than the heavy, <laughs> the 208 mil or 206 millimeter on the American heavy cruisers. She does have torpedoes, but um, these torpedoes are well, self-defense torpedoes, really. Uh, they're extremely short range, four and a half kilometers, um, and you get two triple launchers. Uh, the Kutuzov gets a, bit, gets a slightly better range with six kilometers, but is worse in, the torpedoes are worse in every other regard, and the reload is also significantly longer. Uh, these torpedoes really don't, don't mean that you are a destroyer or that, you'd be should, that you should be rushing anything. So these ships are... Uh, long range. These are sh these ships are long range support. There's their support cruisers. They are not here to uh, most cases not here to rush things, but they're there to uh, rain death and destruction on battleships at long range, or uh, at, at at destroyers at medium range and um, uh, help a little bit with AA cover. But other than that, pretty much stay away because they're still light cruisers. And even though the uh, Shapayev had somewhat decent armor plating uh, against battleship shells. They will just tend to explode catastrophically. Uh, the AA is on a Shapayev is kind of meh. So even with the defensive AA up, she's not gonna. This is not a Cleveland. <laughs> she's not gonna have um, a, a huge impact. But uh, if you park her next to a battleship, then uh, you can still you know extend your uh, protective AA bubbles and um, assist with shooting down things. So, the Shapayev. How have I set this ship up? Uh, I am using the main battery mod 3. You could, because you've got four turrets, you could use the main battery mod 2 for faster reload. That You do tend to lose your turrets quite a bit when um, if you get shot at with that. 
So I prefer the slight buff to precision and in combination with the uh, in combination with the ship skill. And then obviously the usual setup of uh, propulsion and steering gear mod because this is a ship that is very good at kiting. Now what is kiting? Kiting is if you're sailing away from the enemy, making him chase you and uh, you use your speed and your maneuverability to as much as possible dodge incoming fire while unloading unpleasant amounts of HE on the enemy. <laughs> but always keeping them at arm's length. So that is something that these kind of ships are very, very good at. And don't underestimate the armor piercing. It's uh, if, you can, if you can hit precisely, the armor piercing can do a lot of damage with these things as well. Uh, commander skills. Uh, this commander is not yet fully upgraded. He's, um, and I have no idea, uh, I, I do have the adrenaline rush. I have no idea why I picked that. I should have really taken the extinguisher here. This is a this is a uh, this is the commander I've taken from the shores. So this was a long, long like years ago when I started grinding the um, the Soviet line. But uh, I did at least have the smarts to use the exploit weakness, and uh, that would uh, that would work. You you could also uh, get yourself another air defense alert. But um, the skill that you definitely do want to have is the marksman, and I think the survivalist also wasn't the greatest choice. I probably have to reset that to fire supremacy and get another precise aim out of the bargain here. Like I said, this is a very, very old line that I have started grinding a long, long time ago. So yeah, this captain will probably get reset at some point and um, uh, skills redistributed, but uh, that's that. Um, where are we here? You have the choice between range and uh, reload time. They're both good choices. So the reload time plus the turret traverse, they're not bad choices. You could also go for the uh, for the turret traverse module, by the way, in slot one to get uh, to get that boosted a little bit more. And you probably uh, get to sort of where the American heavy cruisers are, but your turrets are not the fastest to turn around at all. Uh, range, on the other hand, gives you the advantage when it comes to uh, the intended role, which is long-range gunfire support. And uh, Soviet shells have relatively flat arcs. They're not the um, they're not the extremely floaty badminton shells that you find on, on the lighter American ships. Uh, so having additional range is is good as well, because it gives you more time to dodge incoming return fire. Both, both uh, valid and good choices. You could get the historical camo for this ship if you want to keep her. And given that this is tier 8, this is not completely out of the question. Uh, this would give you more hit points, which is okay, but she doesn't have an awful lot of hit points to begin with. Still good to have. Uh, again, a buff to main battery firing range. Torpedo speed, which is completely meaningless. And large caliber AA range, which is nice. But uh, it's not a, it's not like a game breaker or something. Uh, a game changer. So, uh, except for the main battery firing range, the rest is kind of nice to have. So if you want to invest, it's up to you. But uh, yeah, this is the Shapayev. So let's see if this ship, uh, or how this ship kind of holds up, uh, holds holds her own in tier eight as a not most maneuverable, uh, but uh, prettyly heavily gunned light cruiser. The first battle is domination on the Haven map. We're fighting Lexington, Veneto, uh, Black Gascogne, Roma, West Virginia, uh, Cargaro, and Benson. And we do have a Shokaku on our side, so uh, lots of uh, lots of spotting potentially of destroyers. You could be very, very tempted to say, "Oh yeah, I mean you've got radar. You should be you should be playing aggressively." Uh, in, you have to be careful with battleship shells. Uh, the, the the Soviet cruisers are not the most maneuverable, and uh, often they are better suited towards long-range gunfire support, and destroyer uh, at, at attacking destroyers at mid-range. All right, we're going to head over towards D Cup, and for some reason I didn't manage to go to full speed. I, I'll realize that in a second. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, I'm aligning my turrets to the right. Uh, there we go because uh, I am planning to take D and then um, park between the two islands and give gunfire support. I have double Bismarck with me. I'm not sure what they're doing over here. Uh, they're supposed to be heading towards C Cup because then I can give fire support against any kind of destroyers. Uh, instead, they're going the long way around um, in a Bismarck. 
Oh, okay, it's going to be one of those games, isn't it? <laughs> All right, uh, I'm trying to... Where the heck are you going? <laughs> it's like, go to... What are you doing? Go to C Cup. <laughs> go there. Why are you sailing around the edge of the map in the Bismarck? Yeah, there's no destroyer threat and I can give you and I can give you air cover. Come on. Stop being stop being afraid. Anyway, uh we the friendly carrier has spotted the Kagero. We have found Roma at our at maximum range. So this is about as far forward as we want to go. I've already switched to the high explosive. Benson is taking on C-Cap. Roma is going to run into a bunch of torpedoes. And um, uh, he is, is he shooting at me? That looks like it's coming my way. Yep, he is definitely shooting at me. So you want to, and this is why you need the propulsion mod, you want to vary your course and speed, single fire, Roma insta damacons. So um, uh, Benson, have fun. <laughs> have fun with permaflood. <laughs> Uh, there comes some, uh, I believe, are cargo torpedoes, possibly. And uh, yeah, like I, like I said, you could be you could be tempted to rush forward. And uh, while I'm uh, futilely t trying to get a perma fire set on the Roma, there we go. And Benson sort of only spread one spread. Maybe only had one available. Uh, if he gets lucky, he gets a flood. Uh, nope, no luck. But uh, you could be you could be tempted to say you should be sailing inside C Cup. Um, not quite, because you'd be in a veritable crossfire, and uh, this ship is very very uh, easy to kill by large caliber battleship shells. And uh, there come some more torpedoes that we need to dodge. Well, we don't need to. Okay, so with with a, a Veneto on my on my left and a Roma on my right. I most certainly do not want to, to get any more, any more forward. I want to vary my course and speed. And it would be really nice if the Bismarcks were tanking, but the Bismarcks are running away. <laughs> Across D Cup, because reasons. So uh, we have lost uh, one of our battleships, set the Roma on fire again, but he's now disengaging. He's on relatively low hit points. Um, the Benson is not coming in. If he was coming into C Cup, I would do something about him. But he's content to just uh, drop torpedoes from long range, so uh, I can switch back to the high explosive. The Vittorio Veneto coming through there is concerning, um, but uh, right now we don't really have an option to do something about it. So let's just dodge the torpedoes, well, it's not necessary. Uh, inch a little bit forwards, but we're already stopping again. Because uh, there's the Veneto and he is on full health and the friendly Benson is is disengaging. He is sort of threatening the carrier, but uh, carrier should be somewhat able to defend himself over that while we're helping to shoot some planes down. Uh, we're just here to hold C Cup because again the but there's a battleship crossfire, there's a West Virginia in front of me. Uh, there's still the Roma because the Bismarcks are still sailing around at the edge of the map being useless. Uh, and there's the uh, Veneto on my left. So I do have to reduce the amount of battleships shooting at me because that's a uh, tank. Tanking is not something I can do. And yeah, there comes the West Virginia as well. That's why we're going already forward again. Uh, let them waste their shots on me. They're not doing an awful lot of damage at this range, but I do have to be careful with the Veneto. Uh, the carrier is helping out. And uh, we're, both teams are holding two cap. C cap is not in danger. Oh, there comes the Benson. Okay, if Benson comes, is going to try and go for the cap. I want to switch to armor piercing, reverse to cut off the firing angles of the Veneto. Yeah, Benson seems to be coming my way. Um, there's a, there's something next to me. Careful, there's a Benson. Uh, Zeton, what are you doing? <laughs> there's a Benson. The Benson, right there. Your, yes, he's seen him. Right, you're shooting, you're shooting 150 millimeter high explosive at him. There will be torpedoes in the water. I'm just, I'm just mentioning. That. Okay, ben, uh, Benson smokes up. Uh, I can radar him, so he's not going to stay in his smoke. There come the torpedoes. Seaton runs into them, as expected, because destroyers don't have torpedoes. <laughs> Who, what, what, is, what is that madness you speak of? Uh, radar is down, but uh, Benson is kind of still visible inside his smoke screen. Veneto is under, under heavy attack, and now the Benson is down. Uh, Veneto comes around, so I can't push any, for any forward. The Bismarcks are still being useless. There is a Black Cascogne on very low hit points. Let's see if we can help out with that thing a little bit. Kill that, please. Um, I'm now coming under air attack from the carrier. Uh, and uh, she can't defend herself against against carrier attack. And yeah, I think the, if the carrier doesn't uh, doesn't finish up the uh, the Veneto anytime soon, then I'll be in trouble because I can either be killed by the Black Asconia because the Bismarcks are completely useless, by the West Virginia or by that Veneto coming around. So I'm already going forward. 
And uh, yeah, there are, there's no real place I can go. Now that hurt, but that could have deleted me. Now he is not in torpedo range, but he is sailing towards me. So I'm dropping the torpedoes blind because uh, the torpedoes don't care. If you're not at range by the time that I drop them, they only care if you're at range by the time they get there. That Roma is still alive, and the Bismarcks have finally managed to kill the Gasconia. Uh, second drop of torpedoes, blind out if I can. No. So, uh, I have managed, however, to kill the, Chapa to kill the Veneto, but uh, I have gone down in the process. So, uh, now we are ahead on points because, of the, because I managed to kill the Veneto. And uh, that means that the Bismarcks have finally managed to sail around the edge of the map <laughs> and are on full hit points, <laughs> can now make themselves useful. <laughs> uh, well played by the carrier, by the way, um, in the defense against that uh, Vittorio Veneto, couldn't have done it without him. And the carrier is now secure. And uh, that Roma is on relatively low health, but he is obviously parked next to a West Virginia. Uh, they do have to kill someone. And they only have 13 seconds to make it happen. I don't think they have enough, they have the, me the methods to do so. The West Virginia goes, go get down, Mr. President, takes two of the torpedoes. But the remaining two from the Chicago are enough to sink the Roma. That seals the deal and we win on kills. <laughs> no thanks to the two Bismarcks. <laughs> and uh, well played by that Chicago. Uh, that, was, um, that was well done. Uh, it was a pretty furious defense there in the corner. So I think this is pretty exemplary on how you're supposed to be playing the ship. Uh, stay at range, cover your corners, uh, be aware of, the, your, of, your, of your maneuverability and, um, and make yourself useful wherever you can. The second battle, uh, we are in a 6v6, and no, actually in a 5v5, and there is a bot carrier in the game. So bot carrier is not a huge problem because they don't know how to drop torpedoes. Uh, they can, however, still use dive bombers. So it, it always pays not to be the closest target in your team towards the bot carrier, but other than that, you can mostly ignore it. Besides the bot carrier, we have a Bismarck, a Richelieu, an Atlanta, and a Kagero and an Akatsuki to uh, deal with. We're playing Domination on Cage, which is nice. I like Domination Battles. Domination is probably my favorite, uh, my favorite game mode because it allows for the most tactical flexibility of things. And uh, we are spawning all the way around at A cup. So we can park ourselves in A cup and make ourselves useful if anything comes around. And there should, the enemy team is kind of Boy, more sure leaning sure. towards C, but you oftentimes find, um, find uh, ships that are coming around A cup. And there's a good chance that it's a destroyer or a cruiser. So I'm going to, I'm going to cover the Benson because the Benson is going to go for A cup. So if he runs into something like the Atlanta, then um, I'll be there to provide some fire support. We've got Brandenburg over there. And uh, the bot carrier. I'm not sure why the bot carrier is sending torpedo bombers out. That is very unusual. They must have spotted something for a second. Uh, so one of the destroyers is over in C. Uh, we are taking A, but I am detected. So there's at least one de destroyer out here. So let's slow down. We don't need to get any closer than this and uh, wait for something to actually be spotted and just make sure that we're not running into any into any sneaky torpedoes. I could use my radar, but I only have one charge and I'd rather use it if uh, somebody smokes up and I have I am guaranteed to spot something. Okay, there's, there's the Akatsuki. He might have been the one spotting him. He was probably the one spotting me from over there. There might be Aka torpedoes in the water, but I don't see them. And uh, there's the Atlanta. See, this is what I was talking about. So technically the Benson would be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, practically not, because I'm not afraid of taking on an Atlanta. Uh, that is a light cruiser as well. Uh, there is the Richelieu on the, uh, in the center, so that one I have to take more care of. But the Benson is now distracting the Atlanta, because the Atlanta finds himself that he wasn't alone, and now has to, or that I wasn't alone, that he now has to dodge Benson torpedoes, which he, given that the Atlanta is a very maneuverable ship, almost manages to do but uh, loses his uh, steering in return, probably damage control that. But now that the Atlanta is trying to kill the Benson, all the Benson has to do is run away because <laughs> that Atlanta isn't going to uh, survive for an, for an awful lot longer. Now he does have torpedoes, so that's why I'm already reversing. Uh, over to, no, yeah, that was almost enough. Over to the high explosive, yeah. Ben, Benson has wisely just run away and let me do the killing on that thing, uh, but is, is helping. That's the dead Atlanta. There come the Atlanta torpedoes, as predicted. 
Um, and now we do need to get back. We do need to get A cup back. But uh, the enemy team isn't holding it. And I'm not going in there with there's a Richelieu. Unless the Richelieu is not looking at me. But uh, I'm not taking any chances here. Uh, Benson? Uh, oh, there's also a Bismarck. Okay. So, no, I'm not going anywhere near that. I'm just here to sit at max range and it doesn't it looks like the Richelieu is not interested in me so let's just set him on fire <laughs> and keep burning him down to his credit he's not uh, damage controlling uh, Bismarck's about to have some Benson problems and uh, we're just uh, merrily burning down the Richelieu so uh, Bismarck probably has something else something else to do Benson keeps him distracted I would have preferred if the Benson had gone in and captured so yeah Bismarck's oh Bismarck's looking at me <laughs> Uh, so he's um, he's running into most of the Benson torpedoes. He's dropped a bit early. He should have dropped a little bit later. I'm just inching back into the capture circle, trying to do the capping. The Richelieu doesn't seem to be interested. Benson has a decent amount of hit points. I just want to cap and then I'm going to get the heck out of here. Because I'm way closer to that Richelieu than I would like to be. But yeah, since the Benson wasn't interested, I'm doing it. And now um, Benson should be safe from the Bismarck. Because the Bismarck says, light cruiser. Aha, om nom, I am going to... Fire myself some citadels. Now the thing is, he's doing that. No, he's not actually. He's firing at the Benson. Okay, I can live with that. But what I'm trying to do is present myself as a target to make sure that the uh, the Benson is not being impacted. And yeah, again, angles. I'm not turning full here because then I would have been giving broadside to the Richelieu, and uh, giving broadside to the Richelieu is not uh, it's not good for your health. For your health, that should be a dead Bismarck. Yep, that is a dead Bismarck. We have managed to capture the Richelieu. I don't know if he's AFK. I haven't really seen him firing his guns, but uh, uh, we're now a kill ahead and we're holding two of the capture circles. So um, I, I am inclined to head more into the center. I think my job here is done on this side and uh, I can help out around Beacon. There's still two destroyers out there, so uh, th they can still make something happen. Uh, there's the Akatsuki. Okay, over to the armor piercing. And there's also Kagro. Okay, Kagro is, is giving me a much better profile, but we need to already slam, on, slam her into reverse because Kagro might have torpedo angles at me. So, uh, we're already getting ready to dot. You don't want to get too close to destroyers. You don't have the maneuverability of most light cruisers, but I do need to reverse because the Akatsuki may have torpedoes away at me. But it looks like the Akatsuki is trying to kill the bot carrier. Kagro has smoked up, so radar up full ahead, uh, because by now he would be dropping the torpedoes behind me. And uh, I don't think the Richelieu is AFK, but the Richelieu seems to be just sitting there. Uh, he has moved a little from his position, I think. So that's a dead Kagro, that's what you've got the radar for, and now it's just a matter of chasing down uh, that Akatsuki. We are, we've got sufficient points that we don't need a cup. And uh, somebody else can clean up the Richelieu. He, I think he went AFK. So, uh, yeah, the, these armor, uh, the Akatsuki has just found out that bot carriers have magic torpedo do dodging skills like all other bot ships and that you really don't want to drop them from behind because they just do that and then they were sailing around and sailing away. So, while we're, while we're trying to catch the Akatsuki, <laughs> who is chasing, after, uh, chasing uh, uselessly after the bot carrier, um, Play for your team if you're in a destroyer, really. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Shapayev, is it, is it a good ship? Yes, I like this ship. Um, I am absolutely enjoying the ship. Singular playstyle, sort of. So long range is generally your friend. You're not, um, you're not very good at close range engagements. But uh, as you've seen in the, in the first battle, if you can drop your torpedo, if something does get into your torpedo range, you might be able to... Um, to to get some drops off and uh, the guns are glorious obviously they are pretty murderous against destroyers other cruisers and everything else you can just burn down and uh, I am thoroughly enjoying the ship this is um, this is great fun I think it's a great tier 8 light cruiser just don't go rushing in right uh, same with things like the Cleveland the difference between this and the Cleveland is that you can play you have I think worse armor but you can play at slightly longer ranges and um, and because of because of the dispersion and because of the uh, precise aim and the better shell arcs, so long range kiting, burning down things, and occasionally stooping in uh, to uh, to take out a destroyer or so, uh, take over a cap if it's feasible. But always mind your angles, keep an eye on enemy battleships, and make sure that you're um, that you're you're not just sailing in a straight line and firing your guns. So. If, if that's sort of the style that you enjoy, then uh, this is a great support cruiser in my opinion. It's great fun to play. 
And that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.